even if only one person connected with that song and it helped one person, hell yeah. You, you know, and the same with the docuseries. I'm like, if one person watches that and is like intrigued by that and enjoys it or goes and runs a race or figures more out about their health, then I'm like, oh yeah, sure. I help one person. Like that. So. In the afternoon, not yeah. in the morning. Yeah. All right, cool. Yeah. No, no, <laughs> no. I'm an early, and I like to play earlier too. Which really? Is with the, yeah, yeah. I like go, I, I can't. I'm not like a night owl. I'm like, really? I'm like an early, early bird. I get up early, so. That's not a very musician thing. No, it's not. And my mom says that all the time. She's like, I'm so surprised. Because I've always been like that. I always go to bed early, get up wow. early, so. Yeah, I did this book with these rappers this one time. They were like, let's meet in the studio at one. And I thought it was like afternoon. They were like, no, let's meet there. At... I was like, how could you be starting at yeah. this time? This is insane. Yeah, yeah. I wonder how much of that is like sort of like acting like I wonder if everyone's actually probably not that way and then they're yeah, just I don't know I there are some people that I've worked with and they're like that and they just get going like late at night but I'm like no yeah I feel like working normal regular person hours is way better yeah the, there are a lot of the LA people to like write with in LA they you know if you want to do like a co-write or anything like that it's not at it's not before lunchtime. Like some of them want to start like 3 p.m. Right. And I'm like, you got to understand, I'm on that East Coast time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's six for me. Yeah. I'm winding down at that point. Yeah. And then also I feel like that means, yeah, like if you're someone who wakes up early, you work out, you eat, you do stuff, you're you're not peaking at three. You're like already on the decline. Oh, like yeah. I, yeah. You got to figure out when you're I think creatively you have to figure out when you're peaking and then you have to design your life around that, which I guess would be weird. If you peak at 1, 1 a.m., that makes you into a vampire or something. Yeah, that's not me. That's not me. Do you, so you're, like, what time do you get up? Uh, this morning I got up like 4.45. So. Why? Why that? Um, I don't know. I just wake up early. Normally I get up and go to the gym um, early. Okay. I like to beat everybody else in there, so I don't have to fight for anything. <laughs> when I'm at home... I get up around that time and I get up, I make my coffee, I come sit back down with the dog, I read and journal, do all that stuff, and then I'll go hit the gym. And Yeah, walk me through your morning routine. So what are you doing? So, yeah, on the road's a little different, but yeah. if we if we go, like, when I'm at home, yeah, wake up, you know, around 5-ish, 4.45, 5-ish, sometimes a little bit, 5.15, <laughs> um, have my coffee, sit there with the dog, I read, journal, and just kind of, like, chill for a minute. Like what's a minute? Uh, like forty five minutes, something like that. So okay. I'm out. The, I try to be out the door by six o'clock. Okay, to um, go to the gym. Yeah, it takes me about fifteen twenty minutes to get to the gym. Um, and then it's either because there's a class there a few days a week, and so they like take up the whole gym. Yeah, and so it's either get there like four thirty. Yeah, or try to be there by seven. To to Either like, side of it. Yeah. yeah. So it depends, but yeah, go to the gym for a couple hours. Couple and, hours. Yeah, I'm in there for a bit, and oh, then wow. I go to the coffee shop in town, go sit and have coffee, and meet my friends there, or whatever. And then I go back home and I run. And there's a trail where I live, so I'm like constantly walking that trail all day. Wow. And then that's so what, that's not even, that's not part of the working out. That's just you're on the trail, just being active to think. Yeah, and, I don't like to sit. I don't like to sit. I constantly walk, and I'm training. I'm doing. It's less than a month away now. Um, November, first weekend, of November, thirty hour race. So I'm trying to hit wow. hundred miles. Have you done that before? No. The most I've ran, I've ran two fifty mile races, um, and then a couple weeks ago I ran uh, like thirty miles. So I'm kind of at that halfway. Yeah. Wow. So, but how often? I mean, that sounds. Uh, Sounds both terrible and wonderful. Like I get what it does for you. <laughs> How often do you actually get to do that though? I imagine that's the exception, not the norm, because you're on the road, right? Running or racing? No, no, the, the whole your whole routine. Like how how many yeah. days a month are you actually getting to do it the way that you want to do it? It has not been like that uh, as much lately. Um, I say lately, the last year basically. Yeah. But when I'm on the road, as soon as we get there. You know, and I prefer to get there early. Um, For it's, a show, like the day before, you mean? Or what do you mean? Yeah, so we, we roll in. When you're on the bus, you typically leave midnight, one in the morning. And, of course, I sleep. I yeah. get off the stage. 
I get in the bed. Uh, keeps me out of trouble. Yeah. I'm like, I don't drink or anything. So it's like I go, I get in the bed. And we wake up. You know, sometimes it's like 7 a.m. Just depends. And I get up, have my coffee. I find a gym. The headline tour, I had uh, all the gym equipment, like squat rack, everything in the trailer. So oh, I work cool. out there. Um, but I'll, I'll go, I map it out, find a gym, go work out for a couple hours, come back, you know, have my lunch or whatever. Uh, we'll sound check, get dialed in, sign all the stuff. And then I just walk, go really? run, walk for the rest of the day until time to go do VIP. So, so is it, is it you re- like sort of idle hands or the devil's workshop kind of a thing? Like you can't keep yourself, uh, if you are, if you are, have downtime, you get yourself into trouble or is it that it's conducive to positive things? No, it's not that I, I, I like to say get into trouble. I just, if I stay up late, my idea of getting in trouble is like staying up eating junk food. Yeah, sure. You know, that kind of thing. And I just think it's good. It's healthier just to go play, wind down and, and get in the bed and stay on a good But schedule. I mean the walk, like, like why not? hang out in your hotel room or see people like so you're just walking is it because if you're sitting you're in distress yeah i mean i can i I said it like i can't go sit like i'll go sit at like a coffee shop read my book or like do those kind of things but you know i listen to i listen to an audible book whatever like walking around but i just like stay moving because i'm like i don't know i i've i've the last couple of years really become like that, just constantly like moving. And I think too, because I don't know, I don't want to just sit inside. It's been like really good for me. I know mood wise, um, it's just, I'm so much happier when I'm like out walking around constantly moving versus just, I'm not going to sit there and watch TV mm-hmm. or, you know, anything like that. So I'm like, why not? Is it meditative for you to walk? Like for it's sure. sort of a walking meditation? Yeah. Yeah, and I mean, you know, if I have meetings or anything like that, I'm I'm on the phone. Yep. I'm just going to walk. Yeah. Because if I sit down, I'm like pacing. I'll yes. get up and like walk around the house. I'm like, go outside and try to walk and, and take those meetings. That That's way. one thing I've hated from the pandemic is now everyone wants to do fucking Zooms for everything. Yeah. And I'm like, no, I'm like, that means that <laughs> right. I can't do my other thing at the same time. So I was just, I'd be like, oh, I don't have good reception. It's not working. Right. <laughs> and then, no, and totally. Walk. And it's funny because I'll, you know, if it's with my agents or, you know, with the label or whatever, they know yeah. I'm going to be walking around. Yeah. So <laughs> I know. And it's probably, I don't even, I try not to even think about what it sounds like to other people yeah. because there's all this noise the, and Especially stuff. with the AirPods, it's picking everything else up. And I then know. most of the time I, my manager's like, are, what are, you, are you walking on the highway? Like, what yeah, my, wife, my wife said that to me the other day. She's like, you know, it's like horrible. Like you can't hear anything you're saying. I was like, right. don't tell me that. It's going to mess up like the one thing that's right. working for I, me. I have to stay moving when I'm doing it. For I sure. know. I know. Yeah. And, uh, it's weird. I, I I think of all, all most of that stuff. My routine sort of similar is like the physical benefits are totally unintentional. Like yeah. like it's actually all about getting to the right headspace. Yeah, not getting into trouble. It's right. it's like um, you know, not going crazy. And then if it's keeping me in shape, that's just that's extra. But that's yeah. not why I'm doing it. Right. Right. Yeah. I you know for me it's just. And you can tell, like my mood. I I have to get. I have to work out every day. Yeah. I have to get up and work out. Yeah. Like there's just. It has to happen, or I it it messes with my mood. It messes with my day, and I'm like, it has been good for me as far as touring, to not be so married to the schedule. Yes. Because you know I'm I. I have, really, I have really bad OCD, and there's certain things that I'm just extremely particular about, and so. It was good for me to be like, okay, it's not it. Everything can't happen how you want it to happen. Yes, and to kind of like dial in and adapt um, to to schedule because I mean that's one thing that was really really like shattering to me, and it 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 caused you know a lot of anxiety of of being like in, in panic, which sounds dumb to a lot of people, but in my brain it was just like I. I what do you mean? We're not going to be here at this time. I have to do this at this time, you know? Yeah, no, the routine is cathartic and comforting and conducive to getting in the right headspace, but it can have this effect of uh, making you feel like you're in control when you're not. So like uh, fundamentally, we all have a certain powerlessness, Mm -hmm. right? And so the disruption of the routine, like travel, 
it can be good because it's forcing you to be a bit more resilient. You're yeah. having to figure <laughs> out how to operate inside an environment where you don't get to de determine how everything goes. Yeah. It's not revolving around you. Sure. Uh, and and that's probably good because otherwise you become super fragile, right? Exactly. Yeah. I mean, and, and and I mean, the biggest it was like overseas. You know, I just did the the whole uh, run over there, and you know, Germany and and Paris and everywhere. It was just like that's a whole other ball game of trying yeah. to find a gym over sure. there. And instead of like looking at it now as like a stressor, I'm looking at it like, okay, this is a cool challenge. You get to find out. And then I got to, you know, visit a lot of really cool gyms and, and stuff over there versus stressing yeah. over it. And I'm like, it's such a dumb thing to stress about. Like you're going to the gym to better yourself and because it feels good and, right. and you know, you, you really thoroughly enjoy it. So trying to look at it from a different perspective. Yeah. It can, it can almost become like a superstition. Right. right and, yeah. and then uh, and then it's not actually helpful or adaptive. Right. It's, yeah. It's just yeah. an addiction like anything else. Well, and I kind of got to this place, too, where everyone around me, you know, on my team was like, OK, we got yes. to make sure Morgan gets to the gym kind of thing. And I don't mind that as much either, because it's like and my manager is always yeah. like, stay on your routine, yeah. you know, as much as po and I do try to stay on that as much as possible, because I know it's like good for me. But. You're like I'm not a. It can make you feel like a baby when people are like you got, and it's like yeah. I I can I'll figure it out. Right. Yeah. And you know, too, for people that don't work out. Yeah. Or don't they? They just think they're like you're crazy. You're crazy. <laughs> and I'm like, no. I mean, I, I really. It's good for me. Like I know. I know what helps me mentally. But again, it it has been like I said, really good to to not have that ability every day, like to make it a challenge a little bit. Yeah, sometimes I feel like I'll, I'll just on purpose, I'll try to change up the order or the difference yeah. so I'm not so fragile that if it doesn't go right. my way, because it's like, look, on an ordinary Tuesday, if it doesn't go my way, whatever. But like, let's say I'm, I'm performing or I'm doing something and it doesn't go my way because my kids are sick or because the flight was delayed or whatever. Yeah, um, yeah. And if I can't like handle that, if I'm so fragile that that like fucks me up, right? Then then all of that work was for nothing. Yeah. Like the whole point is that you should be able to adjust and adapt, and the things are supposed to be making you better, not making you making you worse, weaker. Yeah. yeah, 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 for sure. So you worked out this morning. I did. Yeah, yeah. Sunday's a little easier. Um, I just ran and, and hit a little bit of arms on yeah. Sunday. Kind like of how jump. far? Do you, how far would you run? This morning I only ran like four miles. Um, tomorrow I'll I'll pick back up and and do I don't whatever my training schedule says. I'm kind of tapering down now with the uh, yeah you know, with the rest. Is this all self driven for you, or do you have like a coach that's like this is what you're doing today? I have a, as far as like working out. Um, my friend Corey Gregory has the Max Effort uh, program, and I'm I'm good friends with him, and so he sends me all the workouts as far as like powerlifting stuff mm -hmm. like that. As far as the running, I just got that plan off the off the internet. I think it was like Pinterest or something, and that's what I've been uh, working with. But that I have to have a double mastectomy um, in November, so that's on the 18th. And I've always I've wanted to run a hundred mile race. Yeah. That's that's been my 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 thing and so i know i'm going to be down for the count for at least four weeks and for somebody that cannot like lay down yeah and sit I, that's like really messing with my head so i was like all right you know you've been doing all this running like you gotta just go for it and and commit and so I so found, you're trying to squeeze a hundred mile race in between the uh, before well, the mistake yeah november november 4th <laughs> and so i was like uh you know, I'm going to I'm going to go do that. And then I was like, it's going to take my body a yeah. minute to kind of heal from that. So I was like, well, what better time than when you just double it up, got to lay down. <laughs> but, you know, everybody's like, why are you, you know, I'm running it uh, up north and they're like, why are you? And I was like, it was the only available option the weekend right. I had off. Right. There was actually one. I think it was here in Austin that was in August. I think it was Austin. It was somewhere in Texas called the Habanero. Mm hmm. I was like, yeah, that's not that. Uh, I was like, uh. plus I needed that extra time sure. too. I was like, you know, you got giving yourself a few more months to train, but it, it was the only weekend. And I was like, this is perfect. I'm going to go up there. I'm going to run it. And it's, it's 30 hours. 
that you've got to to do. Basically, it's on a loop, four yeah. mile loop, and you run as much as you can. A four mile loop, which I like too, because I, it's not like I've got to go, you know, twenty miles before the next aid station, that kind of thing. Sure. So I can set up shop. I've got my crew and stuff, and you know, for me, that's good because I can look at it. You know, like all right, I need to try to get. This many loops. As long as I kept an 18-minute pace for 30 hours, I can hit my goals. <laughs> I feel like the, but mentally, though, that's tougher in the sense that you're not having new scenery and you're not like, oh, I have to get to here or to here. Like the, I, I think more in checkpoints or like, gotcha. like I'm going to here and then I'm turning around and then I'm like halfway. Right. I, I think the, the loop of it, like I always, I ran cross country and track in high school okay. and I cross country was always better for me than track really? because yeah. there was less loops. I am weirder in that sense where it, I know some people that that would drive them crazy. Yeah. I like that. I was like, if I could find a race that's a one mile loop, I would be so down. Just do it a hundred times. Yeah. I don't know why for me, I, I love that. Cause I'm like, all right, I can just count it off in my head. So I'm right. talking about that with me. Do you write in your head while you do this stuff? I do sometimes when I walk, especially like, you know, early mornings, like heading to the gym. Um, that's that's like a good time for me because I'll play like, you know, if I have like a track on my phone, you know, instrumental stuff like that. Oh, you would run the track in, in your my head ears and a, then be writing to it? Yeah, which seems to be a thing for me, like just con- continuing uh, just like – you know, with the running and then with like the, the track, like I'll just keep playing it over and over. And so, especially like the early mornings, like that's when I'm most creative, like especially yeah. when I come back from the gym and, you know, it's, you know, I'm back home by 9, 10 a.m. That's like my creative time. Well, you probably have this feeling when you get back to the, your house at 9 or 10, you've, you've gotten up, you've read, you've journaled, you've worked out. Yeah. Like you already won every, like, you know what I mean? <laughs> like right, you crushed yeah. it. That's like a great day. And so you probably have a certain confidence, a certain momentum. And then you're probably also looking around. Everyone else is just getting, getting started. Up. Yeah. They're just having coffee. Yeah. And I'm already, you know, essentially done. Yeah. You know, I, I don't know. I, for me, it, it's just, if it, it's like too an adrenaline rush for me mm-hmm. as well. I'm happier. I'm up. I've just accomplished all this stuff. I mean, if I slept till 9 a.m., I would just want to lay there the rest of the day because like, my day's gone. Yeah. You yeah. Know, I just, that's not, you know, I, I don't, fu- I can't function like that. I got to be up early. There's this dancer named is Twyla Tharp. She wrote this book called The Creative Habit. And she's talking about, she gets up, she starts a routine. And she's like, when I leave my apartment and I'm waiting for the cab, she's like, I already won. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. once, once the wheels are in motion, right, you're going. It, it's, yeah. it's done. And the, so, so really the victory is just starting. It's just, right. if you're starting, everything else takes care yeah, of itself. For sure. And I think yeah, for people who aren't, who, who have trouble with discipline or aren't sort of locked into a routine, yeah. they, they think that it's this insane amount of willpower every day, but actually weirdly it becomes less and less because you're just, as long as you're starting and you get into the rhythm of it, it takes care of itself yeah, the rest of the way. For sure. Agreed. So you listen to the same song over and over again? If it's like a track to like write to, yeah. yeah I'll do that if I want to like try to nail something down, um, you know. With the, and I do that a lot on like the plane. Hmm. You know, I try not to, you know, people will be watching movies or whatever on there and I, I just can't. I'll watch a little bit of The Office because that's about the only show I watch. I'll watch that on repeat. Um, but yeah, I'll try to like just play a track in my head and uh, we're, you know, put my headphones in and play it and write the lyrics like that sometimes. Because obviously I can't have a guitar, sure. you know, out on the plane. Uh, people might be, <laughs> might not enjoy worse. that. Um, yeah. And so, you know, it's moments like that that I, I try not to waste, too. Right. And it's it's good for me, especially like, you know, walking or whatever. I like to, especially with the training, the main thing for training for an ultra like this is just trying to be on your feet. Yeah. as much as you can all day because i mean you got 30 hours doing that you don't want to be sitting so if i can just be out walking you know I'll, I'll call my mom or whoever or i'll be listening to this track and like working on stuff as i'm out moving when i when i work out or when i run and when i write i will pick a song and it's usually a song that'll last like i can usually make it 
like a song work for like a week or something. And I just listen to that same song okay. over and over and over again until it sort of blurs into something where I don't even know where it begins and ends. Right. And I just get into a groove that lets me sort of lose track of time. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Can so you're you a little weird too. Oh, totally. <laughs> totally. totally. <laughs> Most creatives are. Well, well you, you sort of find out what works for you. For and sure. then you're just like, I don't care as long yeah. as it keeps doing yeah. the thing. Um, so yeah, so for me, like, that's like a currency, like, I, like, like I have to, I'm always looking for those songs because right. I feel like those songs are unlocking stuff. Yeah. So when I find one, then I'm like, fuck, okay, like this is a, this yeah. is a good one. Right. I, and then, but then there's also, there's something transactional about it because like I'm using it up, Yeah. you know, like I'm, right. it's like I'm sucking all the emotional valence and yeah. meaning out of it. And then at some point I'm like, this doesn't do anything right. for me. <laughs> You're right. You gotta move on. Yeah. That's that's nuts though. Um so so do you find like getting like like I find like if I go for my walks or my runs, when when I'm coming back, I'm like scribbling a bunch of shit down. Like it Nietzsche said something like only ideas had while walking have any worth. Nice. And there's something about I think getting moving and being outside that gets the brain moving. Yeah. That if you were sitting there trying to do what you're trying to do, yeah. you wouldn't have the same amount yeah. of success. Yeah, for sure. I mean, too, for me, like as, from a creative standpoint, I could go, if you told me to go in that room right now with a guitar and write something, yeah. I could. Yeah. <clears throat> might not be very good. Yes. You know, so for me, I don't I don't push myself. I'm like, you know, with with that, I'm like, if it comes to me, it comes to me and it's, and it's something I'm going to use. Yeah. I know that. Um, I have to be inspired with it, and yeah. I, you know, I there's there's plenty of of writers that that can just go and and write something to be amazing. I can't tell myself you've got to go write this and expect it to work. It could, but I I prefer the stuff that you know inspires me. But I find when I'm walking, when I'm out, and I'm not just sitting there forcing myself to do something. It's it's so mindless for me. I kind of yeah. just let my brain. So it is, you know. Uh, it is like a meditation, I guess, for me because I can, I can't just sit there and really try to meditate. I've been working on that, but yeah. that's the for, sitting sounds like it'd be the hard part for you. Yeah. So for me, being outside, walking, and just trying to, you know, I just let my mind run then, yeah. and then just kind of I soak it all in, and, and that seems to be what works for me. There's this quote. Um, I forget who said it, but it's something like inspiration is for amateurs. Yeah. So there is something about like, this is the time that I do the thing every mm -hmm. day, right? Yeah. Like if you're like, if you only work out when you feel like it, most people are not going to work then out. Then I'm not going to work out. Right? Yeah. So there's, there's something about like, for me, it's like, this is the time that I do it every day. I show yeah. up. Sometimes it's good. Sometimes it's not. And sometimes I do great stuff. And then sometimes I'm just, I'm just putting in the time. But yeah. then I find it's like in the afternoon or on the walk or the workout later that whatever problem I was having before my mind fixes right or I re okay actually wait I gotta flip that around yeah. so so it's 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 actually it's it's more complicated than inspiration is for amateurs there's something about showing up being a professional doing it at a set time yeah. and then setting space and a kind of a meditative practice or an openness that allows for serendipity and just stuff to happen. So you got to let your mind just sort of chew on it in the background for a while. Yeah, agreed. So for you though, it sounds like it would take more discipline for you to rest and recover than to push yourself. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And I, I know that, you know, next month that I, I do, I, I'm preparing myself for that, like mentally. Um, but the doctor, she was like, look, you, you can walk out of here. You're going to be able to get it and walk out of here. And she's, like, I was like, so I can walk. She's like, I encourage you to walk. And I was like, how much are we talking? <laughs> you know? And so she's like, I mean, don't, don't be like crazy. But yeah. she was like, yeah, you need to walk. And she was like, within, you know, hopefully like a week, you can kind of start doing, you know, legs, maybe even sooner than that. And then like slowly, like work your way, yeah. work your way up. And she was like, what? You know, everybody's kind of different and you don't know exactly what's going to happen, but she's like, you can, with your health and like you being in shape, she was like four weeks, probably max. But again, everybody's different. 
But I imagine like your your average, uh, not even average, a, a, a coach would be like, you can't work out every day. There needs to be rest and recovery days. But for you, I imagine I it's better for you mentally. Yeah. That you would take the punishment physically because mentally it's more important that you are consistent. Yeah. I mean, I go to the gym seven days a week. I don't, re you know, I'm not recommending that for, yeah. for everybody, but I know a lot of people that do. And, you know, I think there's once you, I'm not going in there like on the weekends or like a little, uh, the running is more intense on the weekends for yeah. me. You know, I take, I do take days off from running a ton and I'll, I'll, I'll walk. Um, but yeah, as far as like working out, you know, I'll, I'll go to the gym. Like there's this bicep workout that I do every day because your body kind of, your arms, like your muscles start to adapt there and there's like a lot of research into that i'm not going to bore everybody i don't recommend that for everybody you got everybody's body's different but there's certain things like that that i've like you know worked on as far as like my shoulders like the first ultra i ran i was so sore in my shoulders so i was like Just from right. holding your yeah so i was like all right we got to go back and we got to start going to the gym and training shoulders a lot hmm. and i started doing that and strengthened my shoulders this last race i ran no shoulder pain so it's things like that that i'm i like to like dial in on that stuff and see what works do you ever think about what that energy directed towards your music and your career would do? Or are they balanced? Do you know what I mean? Like, that's obviously a, an incredible intensity that you're directing towards a thing that is not your main thing. Do yeah. you ever think about that? Yeah, I think this has been really good for me within the last couple of years to like really start dialing in the, the fitness. Yeah. Because, you know, I... I need to have something other than music, mm. you know, uh, because I feel like if you get too engrossed in one thing, you know, you it, I think there's a lot of balance. Yeah. And so while I am really engrossed in like the fitness stuff, I also know that, you know, when I'm on tour, it's like, oh, it's 5 p.m. I've got to go. I've got VIP. And then, you know, I get a little break and then I go and I play the show and I deliver. And, you know, I've got that kind of going in there but i think you should have balance because for me working out and doing all this is i mean i would say it's a hobby it's that's obviously a lifestyle for me now yeah. but i enjoy doing that and it's something mm -hmm. other than the music and if i feel like you know also i can't put everything i have into the fitness element because i also it's good for me to focus on the music as well so i think it's good for me to have balance because if i just focused on music 24 7 I think I get really burnt out. I get really tired of that. Do you, I, a friend of mine, actually, so he's like a mutual friend of, of a friend. And we were talking, we were describing this person. It's basically that he he was a partier who did music on the side. Gotcha. You know, yeah. and yeah. I'm sure you know people like that. How how much for you was, was all of this kind of a professionalization and a getting really serious about what you do? Yeah, I mean, so... I started kind of playing out my freshman year of college and you weren't necessarily getting, well, you weren't making any money, Yeah. <laughs> uh, but you got paid a lot of times in alcohol. Yeah. You, know, you got a free, you know, beer tab, whatever. And so that's what I was like, all right, I'm going to make my money's worth off of that. And so I started <laughs> drinking, you know? Sure. And so I wasn't, I was, I was working hard, obviously. But it wasn't like I was. I got sober. Uh, I've been sober for six years now. And so once I, that was kind of like the changing moment for yeah. me. It was like, all right. I was afraid, I think, to stop drinking because I'm like, I don't know what it's like to kind of go play a show without yeah. that that courage. So it made me focus on other things. And that's when I really started to dial in. And I can say that if I didn't get sober, I would. I don't think I would have been in the, I wouldn't have worked as hard by any means and I wouldn't have gotten dialed in I wouldn't have met the people that I met and I don't think they would have wanted to have you know worked with me either that that kind of made me concentrate and focus on that and it was like all right well I'm not drinking so I kind of need to you know what else can I can I look at what else can I do and so I kind of became you know I don't want to say obsessed, but I, I was like, really, I was like, all right, you got to work hard at this. Cause yeah. that was like very challenging to, to not do that, especially in the environment that I was in. So once I put that down and really started to focus on, Hey, what do you actually want to do? 
you know, don't half ass this anymore. Yeah. Like you kind of got to get dedicated. And that's when I met my producer, uh, Sadler Vaden. And he kind of sat me down and was like, you've either got to go all in with the music or keep working, you know, your job on the side, whatever. He was like, but you're not going to be able to get to that level you want to get to if you don't just go all in. Right. And so that's what I eventually had to do. And so once I, I did that and that's when I started to see everything changing. There's a story that Roseanne Cash tells in her memoir where she's like, she, I think she did maybe one or two albums. Obviously she comes from sort of music royalty. Right. So she, she sort of gets a break in the business, but she has this dream. And in the dream, she, she's at this party and she sees uh, the singer Linda Ronstadt talking to this okay. man. Do you know this story? No, I don't. Uh, and, and so she walks up to him. The, they all have name tags and the man's name tag, it just says art. Right, which is symbolic of yeah. her, uh, her, her craft, and um, so she goes and she tries to like get in on this conversation. As Linda Ronstadt's her hero, and she says, "Hi, you know, I'm Roseanne." And um, Art turns to her and he just says, "We don't respect dilettantes," and then they turn away from her. And for her, this was this sort of turning point moment that she realized like she was doing music. But she wasn't really, really? doing music. Yeah. She wasn't all wow. in on it. Yeah. And so, like, there's this turning point in her career where she goes back and she's, you know, she starts, she gets coaches and she starts working with better yeah. collaborators. She stops, you know, she, yeah. this is the moment where she's like, oh, yeah, I, I was only kind of doing this right. thing. And now I'm really going to do this thing. And that's yeah. how she becomes ultimately what she ends up becoming. Yeah. That's awesome. Isn't that I've not crazy? heard that story. That's great. But but I think that's there's kind of a there's um, Stephen Pressfield tells a version of that story also in uh, the War of Art. He's saying that that's the resistance, right? Yeah. The resistance is, well, if I don't really try, if mm-hmm. I if I am half doing it, or I have this addiction, or this compulsion, or this this other thing, right. then I can always use that as an excuse yeah. for why it's not happening for me. Yeah. And then when it doesn't happen, I don't have to feel as bad because it's not a rejection of me. It's only a partial rejection right. of me. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's much easier to just try a little bit and then be like, eh, okay. Yeah. I didn't put, all, I didn't go all in on it. I so could have if I wanted yeah. to. Yeah. Yeah. That whole thing versus, you know, working really hard and then failing. But to me, you know, I mean, obviously you don't really think like that, but I'm like, okay, at least I went out there and I gave it everything I had versus just sitting on the couch today. Yeah. Well, and then uh, probably being intoxicated is a way of just getting rid of all those feelings altogether. So you're just kind of, you're just living, you're in a weird way, you're just living kind of in this moment. Oh yeah. As opposed to having to think about what could have been, what you fucked up, what you're dealing with, what you're struggling with. You're just, you're just going along to get along. Right. What was the quote? Someone, I can't remember, but you know, most of our issues stem from not being able to sit in a room alone with our thoughts kind of thing. And that is such, you know, I, I had a moment, um, so when I ran, you know, the 30 miles a couple weeks back, I one loop, I put my headphones in, mm. just one loop. And then when I came back around, I just threw my stuff down. And so it was just silence. Because wow. it, you know, when you start out, you're all in a pack. Sure. And then it just, it breaks off and everybody's yeah. running their own race. But it was like, it was just nature out there. I mean, I was like running through this park and up these trails and through the woods and I didn't have anything else. And at first I was like, this is going to drive me crazy. But then I got to thinking about it. I was like, I started kind of like having all these ideas going through my head. I started kind of like talking to myself, you know, and that's when I kind of like realized, I was like, okay, you know, this can be, and I think that's a big, you know, issue as well as like, sometimes you have to just kind of like let go. And and that, that was a good focus for me. Yeah. That quote is from Pascal. He said, uh, all of humanity's problems stem from our inability to sit quietly yep. in a room alone. And you're, you're going like, yeah, I got these headphones and I got to take them off. But he said that quote in the 16 fucking hundreds. <laughs> right. It's <laughs> a lot. It's like now he would be like, uh, yeah. <laughs> well, it's also just like, oh yeah, that's been our problem yeah. for as long Forever, as we've been Regardless of, of the internet. You yeah. Know? Yeah. But it, it is, it's like, and I've realized that a lot too with, you know, like you'll go stay, you know, you'll go see these houses and I have friends, I'll go to their house. They have like a TV in every room. They have like yeah. a TV in the bathroom. And yeah. I'm like, 
I don't have a TV in my house. Yeah. You know, kind of thing. I'm not saying I'm better than anybody. I have my own vices, but I'm just like, man, we really, we have to constantly, I, I'm one of those people that can't have something in the background or mm -hmm. I'm going to like fixate on it. But, you know, again, I have my own little things, but. No, I, I was just, I did a talk the other day and I was to a bunch of like CEOs and I was like, how many of you have CNBC or Fox or CNN on a TV in your office with the sound off? Yeah. Which is kind of, it's kind of like an executive status and by monitoring the world. And it's like, that is designed actually to be captivating with the sound off. Like it's designed right. just to catch your, they're supposed to your be arresting, yeah. emotionally uh, aggravating images about real time developing information. Yeah. And your job as a leader, just as it's a job of a creative, is actually to be thinking about what's going on in here and to be thinking big picture. Right. And so it's the opposite of what you should be cultivating, yeah. the kind of stillness that you need to make good decisions yeah. and to access the sort of muscle, or to access the, the, the creativity or the insight needed to do yeah. what you do. And, and you're, so, but you're like choosing to operate on like 70% capacity right. because you have this <laughs> low grade distraction happening in the oh, other room. Oh, for sure. And that's like, I hate TVs in the gym. Yes. Because I will catch, I don't, I'm not interested in what's on there, but I'll be like working out. And then it's like, there's something random on there that I just, I, I start looking at it. And I'm like, I quit. You know, yeah. that's why I hate like. TV's in there and stuff like that, because it is. It's just a distraction. It's like, I don't even want to look at that. It's kind of like with, with the scrolling. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just automatic going now, and it's like 30 minutes goes by, and I'm like, I, I didn't need to see 45 videos of dogs. <laughs> yes. You know, like I just wasted 30 minutes where I could have been, you know. Well, you have it like at the gas station now. You're like filling up your car. Oh my gosh, and like, and it's right I, there on the pump. Yeah, I yeah. like just like leaning up against the car and just like thinking and doing nothing even for eight minutes or whatever. Right. And you're just like, no, now it's got it. There's like garbage clips and ads and yeah. you just can't, you can't you escape You cannot it. escape anything, yeah. I think about it at the airport. You know, CNN has a deal at, with most airports to pay them to run CNN like in the airport. There's this, And there's a oh. special version of CNN it's like airport CNN. So they only show like certain things. Like if it's going to be really traumatic, they don't show it. So, it's, but the idea yeah, is so that- so the traumatic plane crash is yeah, what exactly. I'm going to see while we're in the airport. But, but the point is like, they know that even with the sound off, it will suck your attention to yeah. it. That's what they, that's what the produce, the producer is watching it there backstage with a lot of times without the sound off. And he's, you know, he or she is sort of puppeteering the, the yeah, yeah. let's get people going thing. It's just not good for your mind. No, it's not at all. Yeah, the, the people I know that are the dumbest and the angriest are the people who consume the most television news. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they're, yeah. And th those are the same ones that are the trolls on the internet, too. Because <laughs> yeah. it's like you've got all this time to just sit there and, and put everybody else down. So what was Getting Sober like for you? Um, You know... <sighs> For me, it was like I had, I had played a show in New York. It was my first time in New York. It was like one of those little shows that I, nobody got paid. You kind of came up there, and I was like, all right, I have to go to New York. And little did I know the show made zero difference in my career, but it, that whole experience changed my life. And I, I got up there, and again, alcohol. Yeah. And as soon as my feet hit the ground, got out of the car, I just started drinking. And I drank so much that day. I drank more than I, you know, have ever drank before. And I woke up the next day, no idea what happened. And that's such a scary feeling, too, sure. especially as a female to, you know, just let your guard down like that, especially where I was staying. I was not a safe part of town. Like, we yeah. had no money, me and my band. So we were like, you know. And it was just like a hangover for me that, that was heavier than anything I'd ever experienced before. And that lasted for days. I remember the next day I was like, Hey, can somebody grab me a drink? We're at Penn station. And they came back with a beer and I, I meant a water. And, <laughs> and they like just that, assumed. they just assumed. And so I had a beer. I took one sip of it and I put it down. I was like, Ugh. it just, it tasted different to me. Sure. And you know, my motto was just always like the best way to kill a hangover, start drinking again, you know, sure. kind of like counterbalance it, which is super dumb. But that was it. That was the last drink I ever had. And I remember I got home and it just seemed like everything in my life was just like kind of falling apart a little bit. And 
I was just like, what, are, what am I doing kind of thing? And I'm like, I, I have an issue. And everybody's like, oh, you're too young, whatever. You just need to chill out. But I'm like, no, man, like, I, I seriously, I am drinking more than I should be able to drink. And yeah. it's like taking over my life. And I'm doing stuff I don't want to do. And, and that's a problem, too, that we kind of have. I think it's getting better where people are starting to realize you don't just have to be some – 40 year old man that lost his job and just wakes up and pours Rock jack bottom. in his yeah. cereal in the morning like yeah. there's sobriety and like alcoholism like it looks different for everybody sure and i i was just like all right let's let's try not to drink let's just like work on this and i was like all right i'm not gonna drink for a month and then you know like that slowly started to change and so you know i had to change up my habits for sure it was like you're going to be that person that loves sparkling water. Yeah, yeah. We're going to do it. Mm-hmm. And now, you know, I do. But it was just like things like that. Like, all right, you got to have something. If you have to have something in your hand, like make it water. Yeah. And certain little things like that. And at first it was hard. But, you know, I think sometimes it's harder now because like the first month you're like, ugh, you can still taste it. You sure. know why you're not drinking. And then, you know, six months, you know, I could still remember. Even a year I could remember why i got sober but as time goes on you start to think well have i changed am i a little different now could i handle it could i just go have a beer or glass of wine or whatever and then i'll have a dream that i drank something and it's always awful it never tastes good and as soon as i drink it i'm devastated and so i wake up and it's like it takes me a minute to realize i didn't do it but that feeling always helps me to remember okay wow yeah yeah, they tell the story in Discipline is Destiny about the physicist, um, Richard Feynman. He's just sort of going to work one day and he feels, it's like 10 a.m. He just feels this, pull, I should go get a drink. And he was like, that's not a good feeling. Right. Because it's the feeling of realizing that you're not the one in control. Yeah. That you have these desires or urges right. that, that they have you as opposed yeah. to you have them. Exactly. And we're, we all kind of have stuff like that. Yeah. Like, things that we're slaves to, the Stokes mm-hmm. would say. And those are the things we should probably work on. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I always think, I think about it, it's like, do I have a phone or does the phone, the phone have me? Phone have me. Yeah, yeah, I'm currently, I'm all social media. I haven't been on there, you know, in, in like a week, whatever. I just took it all off my phone. And I did that a few months back, you know, I was dealing with a bunch of stuff and like the media and everything. And I was just so like, addicted to seeing what everyone was saying and oh. it it was bringing me down and for like three days it was just like debilitating i didn't go to the gym which i i mean it was so weird for me i just laid around wow. i didn't eat i was like and then finally i was like why do you care what this random person is making up about you like sure. they read the headline of something and think it's true and it's not it's like you know it's not true your friends know it's not true your family knows like does this person, this person's not even coming to your show. Like right, they don't right. even know who you are. They don't even have a profile picture. Right. Like, and so I just, I got off the internet and like, it's so crazy. Cause I go pick up my phone and I'd scroll up and I was like, oh yeah, you don't have it anymore. Yeah. And then I get up and go do something. And so I was off for like almost two months, something like that. It was so great. And then I can't, I, I ended up, the record came out. So I, I got back on there and I have people running my social media, which is good. But then I'm like, oh, I don't need to let them do it. I need to do it. And yeah. then I get back on there, and it's just so easy to fall back into that same trap. I think I'm the person that can get on there every now and again, but not really, I, not for my own phone. I need to have my manager's phone and let me look at something. But I'm back off of there, and I've read more in this past week than I have because I'm always like, oh, I don't have time, which is so dumb. Yeah. Because it's like, no, you totally have time, but it's like I'll pick something up, start watching on my phone. And so now I'm like, okay, well, read that book, have that book with you. Right. And so that's what I've been doing. Yeah, I have it. I have my stuff on my wife's phone. I have a social media team, and then I have, if I want to check it, it's like on my wife's phone. So I'd be like, hey, can I see that? And then she was like, I'm tired of you using my phone because I would just use it all the time. And then so I was like, okay, I'll get a second phone. And it's like, no, I just can't. I can't. Ha- I'm going to have yeah. to get rid of the second phone because right. I was just check. even though I wouldn't take it with me, but I would just yeah. grab it. And you realize, I think, sort of if you have any kind of addictive tendency yep. or compulsion or you're someone who's just kind of trying to numb something, yeah. you will find an outlet yeah. for that. Well, it's such an OCD for me because people are like, well, don't read the comments. And I'm like, 
I, you know, I've always had certain things that's like I would do. And and the, the thing with having OCD is it's like, you're like, okay, I'm not going to do that. And then you're like, yeah, I got to do that. And you do it and you're like, I feel better yeah. for a second. And then it just yeah. repeats again. So that's what I was doing. I was like, well, if I know what they're saying, I'm going to feel better. And then I see something that it, I it, I wouldn't have known this person said that and it wouldn't have been in my head. Yeah. But now I know that, and I'm like, yeah, that's why OCD isn't. You you can't just like scratch, scratch yeah. it. You know, you gotta like let it go, and and so that's what I've been doing for like the last week, and I can already feel myself like kind of winding back down. That's the thing about social media is is I don't know if I've ever felt better after. No, I've never felt better. I'm never like ever. I'm so glad I did that. That was a good use of my time. That that filled me up. Yeah. You know, that was positive. It's always yeah. like I'm angrier now, or right. I'm more envious now or i'm numbed out now yeah. like it's not it it's probably not activating anything good well i'm my favorite part that i'm always like i'm like well i'll go look at these motivational pages sure I'm yeah, like, i have a couple i'm like yes i will look at that yeah. and it'll be great but then i'm <clears> like <throat> then i'm like i gotta watch this and then i gotta watch this and it just you know keeps going and sure. i think some people really can and i have friends yeah. that can like Look at it for a little bit and then put their phone down, not touch it again. I am not like that. And then I try to be like, well, what if somebody really cool like yeah. sends me a DM? And I'm like, you have a team yeah. that can look at that for you and that's their job and they can handle that. And I do think, you know, it is good every now and again. Like once I run my race and I'm done with my race, you know, I've already decided that I will post after my race, you know, that I've accomplished that because, you know, I, I was fearful to like put that out there, but then I was like, I know this is going to be good to put it out there because every show I have somebody asking me if I'm still running that race. Yeah, yeah, sure. And so I'm like, ah, you know, that's out there. So for me, that's good. But I was like, I'll post. I want to update them on the race of people that have been invested in that. But that's it for the year for me. I've kind of decided right. like. And the I, team is posting stuff for you. My team will yeah. post stuff and they have to because, you know, with the record and and then I've got new music coming out and just stuff like that and shows and, you know, for me, but I'm like, well, Morgan, you know, you've got it. And then I was like, no, it's fine. Like, it's to connect with people and I can get on there every now and again and I could go post from my manager's phone or send them what I want them sure. to post, but I don't need to read that. And, you know, I'll get people who's like, you never respond to the comments. I'm like, man, I can't read those. Yeah. Because while there's there could be a million nice things, those three people that want to attack me that have no idea who I am, I'm going to focus on those. And I was like, those people don't matter in my life. You know, they're they're dealing with their own stuff. And it's general. I mean, it, it has honestly nothing to do with me. They're just, they're dealing with something. And so they're on the internet putting other people down. Yeah, Johnny Cash's manager told him one time, you have to have like a vault that no one can get in. Yeah. And that's what the Stoics would call this the sort of the inner citadel. You have to have right. this thing that protects right. the main thing that you yeah. do, <laughs> um, your sort of sense of self, your sort of creative gift, what you're trying to say. Yeah. And the problem with social media is it's it's not only threatens that, it's the opposite of that. It's yeah. it's an infinite amount of people. Like, right. And, yeah. and uh, you you're better off just focusing on what you do. Because I, I find that sort of self-consciousness is the enemy of most creativity. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so what are they going to think about this, right? Yeah. Am I coming off the way that I want to come off? Yeah. That's taking you out of what you're supposed to be doing, which is like, what do I have to say here? Do I think this is good? Is this exciting? Is this interesting to me? Right. <laughs> and uh, did I say what I wanted to say? Yeah. And... Obviously, feedback is important because you're not just making it for you, yeah. but you can't open yourself up to unlimited feedback from the world. No. And and that's, you know, I was uh, like a week ago, my siblings came to a show and they're all they're all younger. And the five year old, like I just watched her and she just. She does what she she wants and she yeah. just says things and she's just like happy and I'm like man don't don't lose it you yeah, know because sure. i'm like i was like that at one point too and like she just is so excited to just like go do things and they they just they're they're not worried about what i'm thinking or what anybody else is thinking and it's just sometimes like really good for me to be around that and witness that again because yeah. we get so caught up and 
you know, like I've got a song on, on the, the new record called 27 Club, and I I wrote it, and I put it on there, and I recorded it, and everything was mixed and mastered and was being pressed, and I got it in my head one day that that was too vulnerable. I needed it gone, uh-huh. and I, like, freaked out about it. I called my manager. I'm like, this has to go, and they were like, well, it's already, and I was like, I don't care. Yeah. I don't care. I want it gone. I don't care what it costs me, what what I lose. I want it gone. Like, I can't, I, I, you know, and it turned out to be one of the, everyone's favorite songs on the whole record, and it was the most vulnerable thing on there, but yeah, I was, like, freaking out about it. I was like, I don't want it out there. I'm worried what everyone's going to think because, for me, that song was so metaphorical and showing where I'm at in my life, and I'm like, I don't want that attention that this song's going to bring. I don't want to deal with that, and... It ended up being like, well, it's too late yeah, because yeah. you, and then it turned out to be the best, the best thing for me. But yeah, isn't the point of music to be vulnerable? It is. And some, but even, you know, like I was like, this was too much, you know, this was too. And then I was like, did you do that with your first record? And it's like, no, you didn't. Because that's the thing about a debut record is you put it out and if it flops, well, no one knows because sure. it's your debut record and right. you didn't have all those people. But, you know, with the second one, there's there's more eyes on it Yeah. Um, if, if your first one did really good. Yeah, at the beginning, you're just like, I hope someone will see this. Right. And, and I, Yeah. And I, you know, moving forward, I had to kind of, I had to take a minute. So I'm putting out an acoustic record and I sit down and I've written all these songs by myself and it's just me and a guitar and... You know, we've put some strings on it and like piano, but it's just, it's acoustic. It's just like really chill and it's focused on the songwriting yeah. again for me. And, you know, I kind of just hit this place too. I've toured relentlessly all year and it's been great, but, you know, I feel like it was just the same. I was doing a lot of the same things. And so I had to kind of take a step back and be like, why did you start doing this? Where's that hunger? Because, you know, now I'm doing what I'm doing great. You know, I'm making money and I'm finally I'm able to, you know, I bought a house and a nice car and I've got all this stuff. But I'm like, what are you what are you doing? Yeah. Are you happy? Yeah. And, you know, it's like I look, I'm like, man, you have all these things and, and the shows are great. And I do love playing the shows. That's that's not even an issue. But it's like, are you hungry anymore? Mm. Are you hungry for it? Because I'm like. I look back at when I lived in a one bedroom cabin paying $500 a month for all my bills and barely able to do that and driving a shitty car with no AC and like going and playing these shows and making no money. But I was hungry and I was excited. Yeah. I was like, so you got to like get back to that and not get so caught up in what it, and I, I remember I was like, I didn't care what anybody thought. Yeah. I would go out there and open for these people and I'd walk out there just me and a guitar. And so that's why I decided to to go do this acoustic record because when I started thinking like that again, I went and wrote 25 songs and all by myself and they're lyrically some of the best songs I've ever written in my life. And, you know, I took them to the label. I sent them like three of these songs and they're like, this is amazing. Like, the you know, you got the CEO, Sony. Yeah calling you like this is the best stuff i've ever heard like this is raw emotional he's like people were crying in the meeting and so i really i was like okay you gotta like get back to that and stop worrying what everybody else was thinking this was also during the same period of time that i was off the internet yeah sure and i was like more responsive to like emails because it was like emails was all i had on my phone and normally i hate checking emails so (laughs) my manager's like you're really on top of things these right. days because I wasn't distracting and worrying sure. about what everybody else was saying because the same people that want to talk shit about me on the internet and make me feel bad about myself, if they see me on the street, they want to talk to me. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, so what does it what does it matter? Yeah. You know, they're not they it doesn't. And at the end of the day, you really just have to like start focusing and that that's such an issue for me is like just focusing on the present moment Mm -hmm. as well but when i started to like let that self go or let all that go you know i started to feel better and then of course i fell back into reading stuff on the internet and now i'm back off off of that and i'm I'm doing a lot better well that that's i think what he meant by having the vault is you have you know now you have money you have space you you, people are interested in what you're doing that that's like that's what success is but you still have to 
figure out how to preserve the original space or like childlike state that the stuff comes from. Like yeah. for me with the Daily Stoic, you know, it started with a couple thousand people. And now I send out this email every day to 700,000 people. Wow. And yeah. so if I think about that too much, it changes what I'm yeah. willing to say, what I won't say. You know, if I read whether people liked today's email or not, like I every once in a while I'll get emails from people I know, like that'll that'll forward the email back to me and be like, hey, I like this one and that means something to me. Yeah. But like I mean, just think if if one percent of the people didn't like today's email, ninety nine percent of people <laughs> liked it, but one percent didn't. That's seventy thousand people. Wait, no, seven thousand people. Right, one percent of seven hundred. Don't ask yeah. me. Da, I play da, da, music. I don't do math. <laughs> um, but but anyway, that's a lot. That's more than you could possibly conceive of, right? Yeah. And so, and and if you got even one percent of, if you heard from one percent of one percent of people who didn't like you the 1% people who didn't like you, it would crush you emotionally. Exactly. You can't possibly let that in. And yeah. so you have to create this space. And, yeah. and that's also true. It's like, you gotta keep space from family and friends For and sure. the annoying neighbor and that you're not, you have to create yeah. this space that allows you to do what you do. And it's, right. it's weirdly harder to do the more successful you are because yeah. there's more stuff trying to get in. Yeah, I mean, that that's, yeah. And, and so, you know, because, too, it was like, I mean, I, I went to the, the airport the other day. I landed in L.A. And there, you know, with, with all, you know, all this crazy stuff going on in my life. Oh, was there paparazzi and paparazzi, stuff? Paparazzi. And I was yeah. by myself. And I've never dealt with anything like that. Sure. And I, I was, like, confused because I'm, like, waiting, of course. Everybody's wanting to laugh and talk about what I had on. I had on sweatpants and a t-shirt and a hat because, yeah, guys, I got up at 3 a.m. that morning <laughs> yeah. to get on that flight. You know, I had had like an eight-hour day already. Yeah. yeah. And I get off the plane and I'm getting my bags and I look over, I was walking, and then there's this guy in my face asking me all this stuff. And at first I was like quiet, but then I I looked at him at one point and I was like, man, I'm, I'm, you're giving me a panic attack. Can you like stop? But there's nothing yeah. I can do about it and I'm yeah. by myself. Yeah. And later, and all that like was out, and I was like, I got on there to read the comments, yeah, which I should not have done, and they were awful. Yeah. I mean, from everything from my looks to how disgusting my tattoos are to how this I'm pathetic. Why would anybody who cares about her? She's a piece of shit, like all this stuff. And I'm like, man, I don't, you know. And so I had to like take a step back and be like, but then I went and read some other articles of other people and I read the comments and they were all awful too. So it's was like, okay, well, we're all getting this shit. We also got to think about who is leaving comments on the, the, on the bottom of articles about like musicians or select, like you realize it's, it's selecting for the right. most garbage have nothing well, going too, on people in the world. Then I started reading people were like, well, they, she called the paparazzi on herself. I'm like, first of all, I'm some hillbilly from Virginia. How do you do that? I have no I have no idea how that is. I want to be left alone. I'm like, if I call the paparazzi on myself, I'm not going to have on $8 sweatpants from Walmart that have a hole in them that I did not realize until I got to the airport because yeah. I got up at 3 a.m. Um, it was just like things like that. This, but I was like, well, why do you care yeah. what someone who they don't understand this situation and like what goes on and like what you deal with and they don't quit giving them that time of day because they're sure. living in your head and Honestly, it was kind of good for me yeah. because then I was like, put your phone down. That was the big mistake of waking up this morning and going picking up your stupid phone. Like, get up, make your coffee and read. Like, stop, like, putting that stuff in your head. And people don't know. They don't know what the truth is, but you know what the truth is. And at the end of the day, in four days, they're going to be on to the next thing. They sure. don't care about this. And it's easier said than done. There's something paradoxical about it, though. I was just thinking about this, like I was going to the airport the other day and I was like thinking about what I was going to wear. And I, I had to choose to wear a sweatshirt because if I wear T-shirts, uh, people see my tattoos and then they recognize me. Yeah. And I was like, well, this sucks. Like I'm, I'm having to choose what I wear so I don't get bothered and I'm wearing a hat, I'm wearing a mask so I don't, so I can just be in my space yeah. and not get talked to people, talked to by people, which because sort of the preferred space for me is to, I, it's wonderful to talk to people. No, totally. Fans. I get it. But, but if I can avoid it, obviously I would. You know what I mean? Right. Um, yeah, for and, sure. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? It, uh, 
it, it's it's a champagne problem, but it's still like weird, you right? Know? It and and that's the thing is they don't because that's how it was. It was like yeah. people think that I called this or like yeah, you know, someone else called this on me. I'm like, I didn't want to do that. Yeah. I mean, I, I was like, and then everybody's like, look how mad she looks, like, and I'm like. I didn't know they were even looking at me, guys. Yeah. I'm sorry, that's my face. I was waiting. <laughs> I was irritated that my bags were taking so long. And I'm like, if you would have looked at anybody else standing around there, like I was tired. I had, and I was like, morning. Who cares? Who cares? And it's that's such like a, a hard thing. And also, you should just don't get a throat tattoo because, yeah, like, right. if I was trying, yeah, I would yeah. have to turtleneck and gloves over here. Because what happens <laughs> is like people vaguely understand. Like, they're like, I think that's that person. But then if you have distinguishing marks, yeah. they're like, it's definitely that person. Yeah, and it's you know, um, and people are like, who cares about this? Who even is this? And I'm like, okay, I don't care if you know me or not. I would rather you not know me if you're going to talk like that anyways but yeah. it's like you know i'm working on a docu-series and a lot of people were like who would even watch this and so then that gets in my head but i'm like okay well don't watch it <laughs> then like i mean everybody kind of has to start somewhere and i'm like i have a fan base that will be interested in this and if you're not interested in that that's fine i'm probably not interested in what you're interested in you know it's just a lot all this and i look back at most of the issues that i have had with you know, becoming more successful is the internet. It's yeah. not the amazing fans that come to my shows and they spend their hard-earned money to buy my stuff and listen to this and allow me to do this. It's not those people because those people are great and I'm always going to want to listen to them. And those are the people that I do want to know their opinions yeah. on things because I'm like, they've been with me the longest and, and they're, you know, there for me and they they get me and we're we're connected i really do feel that connection with them i was like who cares about the people who literally don't even follow you they're just coming right. to your page to ridicule you when as i was thinking about that as i was going to the airport i was just like but i chose this like like exactly. the, the paradigm like it, and it's like it's not just i chose it i could shut it down in two seconds i just exactly. stopped posting shit and go back to writing my books and yeah. and authors never get recognized right and so it's right. like it's it's for me like you said yeah it there the when my books were just working and it was just the books, yeah, you know, it'd be like once a month someone would be like, "Are you Ryan Holly?" Because who makes it all the way to the fucking back of the book and reads the thing? <laughs> it was with social media, which yeah. was a deliberate choice that exactly. suddenly millions yeah. and millions 100%. of people are seeing you on this. And so it's like it's this thing where I'm I'm not resenting it, but I'm like it's making me uncomfortable. I'm not liking it, but I also fucking chose it. And so yeah, that that's yeah. that's this weird thing that we do to that's ourselves. That's what you deal with, and that's what people you'll read. They're like, "Well, you chose this," and I'm like. Yeah, you're you're not wrong. I did. <laughs> yeah. But I don't think cuz you know like at the beginning of my career I was like, oh, man, that had to be so cool to like have somebody like taking photos of you, especially when you're a little kid and you're playing that you're a rock star or whatever and you're like, oh no, 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 yeah. don't take. And then I'm like, yeah, well that's not actually how that works when you go, you know, and it's just like stuff like that and I'm not then too it makes me have a lot more respect and understanding cuz now when you see like these tabloids and this stuff that I used to be like, oh yeah, like yeah. look at what the, and then now I'm like, yeah, you know, that's probably not even real. Right. That's probably not even real. And so now I don't click on that stuff anymore sure. about other people because I'm like, yeah, I'm not giving you that click yeah, sure. that you need because half of this probably isn't even true. And you know, who cares? Like sure. this is a real person. I don't yeah. care if they are, you know, uber famous and like they, they do something. I'm like, Somebody down the street or someone in, in, that's in that grocery store beside of you has done something really stupid, probably, yeah. but it's not on the internet and not, you know, millions of people aren't looking at that. And we are, at the end of the day, all connected. Yeah. And I think we, we totally, I forget that. I think everyone forgets that. And I'm like, you know, it's just, but yeah. No. Yeah, I think the same thing that makes someone an addict or makes them, you know, there's there's part of that I think in every artist some desire to be validated and yeah. known and understood. Yeah. So it's this it's this kind of I wouldn't call it an original sin, but it's it's there is this yeah. this thing in it, and then you get it, and then you're like, either I think you get it, and then you're like, oh, that didn't actually do for me what I thought it would do for me. Right. And now it's this it's not an inconvenience, but now it's just this thing. Like it's like you yeah. you you did this thing. Uh, in in Hawaii, 
the sailors introduced these rats, right? The ship, rats would come off the ship, so they had all these rats. So then the people in Hawaii were like, well, we got to get something that eats the rats. So they introduced these ferrets or these mongoose. And then it turns out the rats are nocturnal and the ferrets live during the daytime. They don't even, but the point <laughs> is, but now they have a ferret problem also, right? right? And um, it's kind of like that. You think that, hey, if I get to this level, I do this thing, yeah. it's going to fix this problem. Right. And then it doesn't. And now you just have this other fucking thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's in it too, you know, it's, like you said, it's a champagne problem. Yeah. And it's like, you don't like it when things aren't going good or, or, you know, they're going bad. But when, you know, the attention is making things great, then yeah. you're like, oh, this is great. You know, and it's like, we don't get to choose yeah, yeah. how things go. And so it is. But again, like, yeah, it, it you, you, the people that, and that's the thing, you got to focus on the people that support you and the sure. reason that you're doing this, because that, that all goes back to, to like, you know, me being afraid to put 27 club out. Yeah. I'm like the people that connected with that song are because they're going through it. And I'm like, okay, even if, you know, only one person connected with that song and it helped one person, hell yeah. You, you know, and the same with the docuseries. I'm like, if one person watches that and is like intrigued by that and enjoys it and it, it helped Starts them in some music. way. Right, or you know, in in or goes and runs a race, or goes and does something proactive, like with the the double mastectomy, or like figures more out about their health. And I'm like, hell yeah, sure, I help one person, and you know. Well, Twenty Seven Club is a great song, and it's probably partly. I mean, the Twenty Seven Club is probably rooted kind of in what we're talking about in yeah. the sense of like why musicians tend to die at that age or before that age. Is you think getting that success or fame or money or whatever right. it is, it's going to fix you. Yeah. And it doesn't. It doesn't fix you no, because no. you're never going to fix inside stuff with outside stuff. No, and and that's, you know, that's such an issue for me too is I'll look. And I have to remember that too, even with the, the ultra running or whatever. I'm like, the gym's not going to fix you. You still have to. You have to do the work. You have to do the work. That's helping you for sure. Mm -hmm. And I'm, you know, to be healthy and, and to do these things, but it, it's still, yeah, it's, it's all the, the, the mental work and the, yeah. the inside work, the soul work is the hardest. And it's the one I typically am like, Ugh. yeah, I mean, it's, it's easy. It, it seems crazy to say, and maybe even a little, you could, but it's like, it's easier to go get famous or to make a lot of money or to sell a lot of records yeah. or sell a lot of, it's actually easier to do that shit mm -hmm. than, which the odds are infinitesimal of being able to accomplish, right? Like yeah. how many people are trying to do those things and don't. Yeah. It's actually easier for some people, for people like us to do that yeah. than to sit <laughs> quietly in a room alone and do the other work. Oh, it's yeah. way yeah. harder. Yeah, and you know, yeah, for sure. And uh, yeah. It's, it's it is definitely way harder to do that. It feels like <laughs> well, it's way harder also because how do you know if it's working? Uh, nobody's right. clapping for you as you're exactly. doing it, and that's and that's the thing that it's like you have to remind yourself because it, it's it's so it's crazy too because it's like I, I get off the stage and you have to like you have to understand right before COVID, I mean, I finished recording Reckless a week before the lockdown. And I was just like, okay, what, you know, what? And of course, at that time, I'm like, ah, I get a week off, you yeah. know, like whatever. But before that, I had not played any headline shows. I was not selling anything out. I was lucky to make $200 a show, maybe 500 you right. know, that I split with a band. Like, and then coming out of that and the first show I played, coming back, the release show, two sold out shows. Right. And so it was very, like, different for me. I went yeah. into COVID. Nobody really knew who I was, um, and I don't want to say that in a in a bad way. Yeah. I had a, a a good following, sure, but it wasn't like it is now. And fortunately for me, I still have those fans, and and they were great, and you know they helped support me through COVID with the Facebook lives and all that. But you know it wasn't like it is now, right? And so coming out of that, and then I'm like selling out shows, and I do my first headline run, and it's sold out like and upgraded and just like crazy. And then it's like, so you go and you, you, you know, you work all day and you go and you play for an hour and a half, two hours, and then you go get on the bus. It's just silent. Yeah. And it's like, it's weird. And at, when I came off of that tour and I went home, it was like, I was excited to go home, but at the same time, it's weird to not have 
people, you know, a couple thousand people telling you how much they love you every yeah, night. Yeah. And it's like this weird feeling. It's like you, you want that step. So it's like figuring out, you know, in therapy, I'm like, I'm trying to figure out how to balance that home life, road life, because it's yeah. not, I'm like, I mean, I think everyone as narcissistic tendencies. I mean, you take a selfie and post it yeah. on the internet. You're not posting an ugly selfie. You're posting yeah, it because sure. you think you look good. Sure. I mean, yeah, come on. I could, you're taking five and you're picking the one you look best in. Exactly. And, yeah, yeah. Like we, you know, I do that. I'm not going to, you know, sure. so it's like you have these tendencies, but it, it's, yeah, going, going kind of, you know, going back to that, it's just like, you, you got to, I think you have to find that balance no matter what you're doing. Is yeah. that what the homesick road sick yeah, for sure. And, you know, it's just like, it's like when you're home, man, I talk to all artists deal with this. It's just like, because I love touring. Yeah. I do. And like connecting with these people and it's, you know, playing and seeing people sing these songs that you've written when you're dealing with such a difficult time, singing that back to you, crying and like having that moment. You can't replicate that. I mean, there's just <laughs> nothing else like that. Yeah. And it makes, you know, some small town kid like me growing up in the middle of nowhere sit back and be like wow and so you want that and you love that you crave that and then it's like but you also you miss home when you're out there and you really you miss home and it's like it's hard it's a lot you know especially my band like they've got kids they've got wives and i see like how difficult that is for them to be gone and then it's like you go home and i'm home and then I start getting like, okay, I haven't done yeah. anything in a minute. I yeah. need to get back out there. And it's like this tug, you know, tugging. And that's why, like, next year touring, I've kind of, like, found, like, for the headline tour, let's do, like, three weeks on and, like, two weeks off. And then, like, another three weeks on, like, something like that versus, I mean, we were gone for, like, two months, just straight, no right. breaks. And that's a little harder. But it's, like, kind of finding that balance. But it is totally, like... It's a weird feeling because I'm not ungr- I like I'm so grateful for everything and I'm right. so blessed because it's like what the moment that you the more negative stuff when everybody's coming to your page and doing that I mean you know the saying no publicity is bad publicity yeah and you know again people I'm like people think I'm that smart to even know how to do any <laughs> of that stuff I'm like man come on but it's just like. Yeah, it's this a bit of tug and war, but again, it's it all comes back. It, everything for me has circled back to balance, and I think that's been this year has been such a learning curve for me. And the one thing that continually comes back to my mind is balance. Yeah, there's a tension where, like, when I'm at home and I'm in my rhythm and I'm do, getting to the, do the routine exactly as I like it yeah. every day. I'm going to see my kids. We're spending time together. I can feel the relationship getting better. And then I'm like, this is how it's supposed to be. My work is better. Like right. I didn't I didn't go anywhere for 500 days in COVID. Like I didn't travel for work for 500 days during wow. COVID. And yeah. I was just like, holy shit, this is like, I'm operating at a whole other level. Everything in my life is working. And then, then you're like, but I gotta get back on the road. Like, yeah. you know, then, right. then, then you're like, someone wants to pay me somewhere to not do this? Yes, you know? And yeah. so the, you, you have these two parts of yourself, this part that knows what's working and knows what's better. And then you have this other part that needs to do this thing, yeah. both professionally and in its own way, personally. Right. And <laughs> and yeah, it's the, the balance of it is so it's, tough. It's, it's interesting. And it's like, and I think everyone deals with that in some sense. You know, we all have what we have to do and then the things that we like feel like we we want to do you have your job and then you've got this but then it's like we're we feel like we're it's we're being pulled two different ways um and you know again that looks different for everybody well and it's but it's hard to calculate the opportunity cost right so it's like you're going on the road and you're like this is what i'm making being on the road this is good but what's harder to calculate is when I'm home, I'm writing better. Yeah. I'm happier. I'm sleeping I'm, more. Yeah. I'm eating better. Yeah. You know, I'm I'm on a schedule and two, like that's worth something. That's, that's worth, worth so way much. More. And I had to really sit back as I go into the next year because I, I did a lot this past year of saying yes. And I'm not really even talking about shows. I talked about other things that I was saying and I was just wearing myself thin. Sure. And, like, right before the record came out, there were, like, two days where it was just, like, stack, 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 stack. Yeah. And, you know, I had to get up extra early. I was like, all right, if I want to work out today, which I do, and I have to do that, 
I have to get up at three thirty this morning. I yeah. have to do all this stuff, and then I'm still working till eleven p.m. tonight doing these things. And I look back and I'm like, you know, you wouldn't have worn yourself that thin. Say no. Yeah. And I look, and that that kind of all came to me as well when I was like looking back at the at the things that I, you know. The, the way I used to operate before things really took off for me is I'm like, you you know, you didn't have as many things to to say yes to. Yeah, back you then. thought you were good at saying no, but it's actually you just right? weren't being asked so to do that. Now much. I'm like, I'm like, hey, you can't say yes to everything. You can't be so accessible, and that's yeah. the problem. Like, I, I can reach anybody right yeah. now off that phone, and so you know, that's that's. But I look back, and you know, this last year, I missed three weddings of people very close to me going to play shows yeah. and i'm like i don't really even remember those shows or how much money i made but i'm like i do remember seeing my whole entire family together yeah. three separate times yeah. and we rarely get to do that we don't get to do that and i'm like i'm gonna miss I'm, i missed out on that and you know and so to me it was like i had this amazing shows and i'm very very blessed but i'm like going into this next year i have to make time for my family yeah. and my fans tell me that all the time they're like you they they literally and that's what's so great about these people they'll come to vip and they're like they'll be like hey you should make some time for yourself yeah which i think is amazing that's that so they're nice. they're they're saying that and those, when you're in your head you think like saying no like you're going to disappoint people and then you in it's only in retrospect that you realize nobody gives a shit. Like, no. like when I ask people to do stuff and they say no or they don't respond, you know what I think about it? I don't think anything. Right. <laughs> like, You're like, like okay, I asked yeah. 20 people and eight said yes. I'm I'm thinking yeah. about the eight people that said yes. Right. And that, you know, it it and that's why I'm like in this next year, I was like, I only want to I have a list of like interviews I'd like to do or appearances that I can make. Like I'm like, I want to work towards those. But not just do, you know, if that that's the thing too. I'm like, only go do things that mean something to you and that you're interested in. Yeah. I did a lot of things this year that I was like, oh, I don't want to do this. And I'm like, why are you doing it then? You don't get that time back. And I do agree on pushing yourself sometimes. And sometimes it is good to go to do, do these things. But I'm also like, there's so many things that are like, this is such a good opportunity. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to be miserable. So I would, I'm like, I don't care if, you know, that, you know, this could have been an amazing opportunity and like boosted my career a million points, but I'm going to be miserable. I'm like, I would rather go do something that means something to me. And I think we, I, I, I really have to focus on trying, again, balance. It's all balance. When when my books first started to sell, I, I met this sports psychologist who works with all these baseball teams and he, he gave me this amazing advice. He was like, look, He's like, when guys first make it, especially the guys that come from like South America or Costa Rica or these other countries, he's mm -hmm. like, they got there because they fucking swing at everything. Yeah. He's like, there's even a saying uh, from like the Dominican Republic that you don't walk off the island. And like you hit, you, you have to hit, right? Yeah. You hit at everything. You don't get there by, by being walked, right? right? And he's like, but as soon as you get in the league, he's like, it's all about pitch or it's all about swing discipline or pitch discipline. Yeah. It's all about what you don't swing at right. because the best people in the world are throwing pitches at you to try to trick you effectively. Oh, yeah, for sure. And so he's like, it's all about saying no. Yeah. And he gave me this sign that's in my office. It's between two pictures of my kids. And so there's one on the top, one on the bottom. In the beginning, in the middle, it's just this sign that says no. Like capital letters, no. Yeah. Because when you're saying yes to stuff, it's not just that you're saying yes to stuff and now you're busy. You're saying yes to stuff. And by definition, everything you say yes to is saying no to, to something, something else. else. Yeah. And a lot of times that's not a different opportunity that could be worth more. You're saying no to yourself, like right. to your mental health, to yeah. your physical health, to your creativity, to just happiness and enjoying the success that you have. Right. And so you have to get so good at saying no, or I, I wouldn't say I'm good at saying no, but I'm good at just not responding. <laughs> I've gotten right. way better at just ignoring it. And a lot of times it goes away. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> no, Napoleon had this policy of he would sometimes open his mail like three weeks late 
because by the time he opened it, a lot of things would have resolved themselves. Right, yeah. And that can be true. When, when people are offering you stuff with deadlines, you're like, you know, if I just respond like a week late after. Yeah. Oh, sorry, I missed it. They yeah, don't know. For sure. Um, it's of course better to, it's better if you have the confidence and the security and the upfrontness to be like, I can't do it, but you, you don't have to. Yeah. And you don't have to apologize. That's the other one. Someone, someone told me two things. One, which is like, you don't have to say sorry. Yeah. And when you give an explanation, what you're often doing is asking them to argue with you. And then the other thing they told me was like, you don't owe anyone a response. Like right. if someone sends you an unsolicited inquiry, like, you don't owe them stewing about it, thinking about it, justifying why you can't. You didn't ask for it. Exactly. Um, yeah. You can just yeah. pretend you didn't get it. Right. That is very good advice. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. What? Oh, okay. All right, cool. Um, but uh, I, you have that great line. Was it in Psychopath where you say, um, it's a rule down south that you can't talk about your mental health? Uh, the night, yeah. Yes. Uh, it's hard to talk about this stuff. Yeah. Um, because it's vulnerable. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it really, it really is. And like growing up to around these, you know, these Southern, like the Southern men in my life, but even so, you know, more of the women, obviously my mom was much more of like asking me about things and like talking about stuff with the men, like, you know, especially my grandpa and then they grew up, they did not have. Yeah therapists they were lucky to have food on the table yeah. you know so it it is but i think things i do think things are getting a little better with that because we're talking about it more yeah. and that's like the biggest thing but even then talking about stuff i don't know how many therapy sessions it took for me to really be like okay i'm gonna like actually be openly honest like and actually in depth with you about what's really going on now yeah, no, I hate this bullshit that like Gen Z and millennials are fragile and they have all these mental health issues. It's like, just because you didn't treat your alcoholism or your anxiety or your depression doesn't mean you didn't have it. That, exactly. I, I would argue that people are no more or less unhealthy than they've ever been in history. No. It's just people are actually doing something about it. And by the way, part of the reason we have these issues is because you didn't deal with your issues and your parents didn't deal with their issues. And, and it's, it's a just, chain it, of yeah, suffering. It, it just, I mean, and the thing is, no matter what century you're in, like we talked about it earlier, like you have, there's a whole new set of, of issues going on. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's, but people are people and have the same fucking problems that they've always had. Right, for sure. Well, this was amazing. Thanks. Yeah, no, thanks, man. Appreciate you having me. Yeah, thanks for making time. Yeah, oh, for sure. <laughs>